on things and trying to, you know, when you try to force things to happen, it just, it just creates more of a mess. So if you were listening in any capacity up until coming into into the meeting now with me, then that's what you were, you know, you were hearing because that's what she was referring to, trying to get people's mind at ease and, you know, get them to a place where they can, you know, feel free to transition. It is a huge thing. I will tell y'all that. It is very huge. It's nothing, I, you know, I try to be as open as I can with y'all and as honest to teach y'all and to, you know, to, to tell y'all all of the aspects that I am aware of. I don't think I know it all, but all of the aspects that I am aware of that goes on and there is um, uh, spiritual abuse and all that does take place. One of the ways that you can know how to conduct yourself and how it is to be conducted. Think about the prodigal son. Think about the prodigal son. Think about, um, you know, in the aspect, think about Jonah. You know, Jonah chose to go a different route than what God wanted him to go, but God did not do, you know, God didn't um, harass him or what have you. He made his own way hard. His disobedience made his own way hard, so it's nothing that we have to pronounce on people or, you know, nothing that we have to speak on people and that kind of stuff. You get into a, a witchcraft, and uh, that's rooted in superstition is basically where that comes from. It's a heavy root of superstition, and superstition is, you know, pretty much um, is, is symbolic of, of, witch, of witch, witchcraft and seances and that type of stuff so you know you start getting off into word curses and that kind of stuff so think about the prodigal son the prodigal son left his dad had to allow him to go that's what you call respecting people's decisions you know his dad allowed him to go he wasn't happy about him going chances of you being happy about someone exiting is very slim it's probably gonna hurt you know unless there's somebody that's a troublemaker or what have you then you probably want them to boot scoop boogie and all but if it's someone that is is, you know, has been very vital, is someone that has, uh, you bonded with quite well, they've been with you for a tenure of time, and that kind of stuff, and then something like that happens, yes, it is going to, you know, have some element of pain to it, and so the prodigal son watches, his, the, the father watches his son leave, and takes all the riches with him, because, you know, when we leave from a place, we won't get, give me my stuff, you know, that's the mentality that we have, give me my stuff, of point blank period I don't care what it was if I bought one of them chairs give me my chair you know I want my chair it don't matter that's what people's mentality is and that's where you know that's what they do and so what ends up happening is is the fact that when people exit out of a place if you don't understand how to allow them to exit out of a place you can get caught up in some more crazy stuff so the prodigal son dad he does not trip at all he 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 cries but he does not trip he goes on back to start taking care of the business just like he was supposed to because that's what you do if someone ever decides they want to exit from you you just continue on handling your business to the best of your ability that you do you know and that's what he did he went on and he handled his business now that boy set himself up for some trouble it wasn't anything that the dad spoke on him but it was the disobedience and the riotness of living that caused him to go through the things that he went through he ended up losing everything and ended up you know um uh, you know he ended up <laughs> I, when i said that just then i y'all had y'all know i I love music, and all of a sudden my head went to something too short said in a song. You know, he said we, he was talking about ended up losing everything. He said, and the next thing I know, I ended up freaking by a garbage can. You know, so you know he in bad shape. He tricking a girl by a garbage can. So you know, my head went right there because you know y'all know how I am about that rap music. But um, you know, anyway, uh, the, he gets himself in a bad situation. I mean, he's in a bad one, and it's all at his his expense because it's the way you do a thing you know it's the way you do it so she was teaching about that and so i want y'all to be 
you know, I, I want y'all to know the proper way in how you go about handling things. You know, Tiffany can say it from a different place because she's done transition through it and she's made it to a particular place. But I do understand the people that are struggling in it. You know, they are they are struggling in it. I do understand the people that have been in a church all their life, a particular church. Their grandmama was at that church. They mama and was at that church and all that kind of stuff. And so they are connected to or tied to that church. I, I, I get that. You know, a lot of people are not connected to God. A lot of people are connected to a building. They're connected to a name. You know what I'm saying? Presbyterian, first, pre, first Presbyterian of Johnson Street, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, Little Elam, they, you know, whatever name it is, they are, they're covetly connected to that and not necessarily connected to God. And so when it comes time to transition, it's a whole lot of hoopla, you know, it's a whole lot of, um, it's tough, you know, it's very hard, you know, they don't really understand how to do it. So that's what, you know, that um, she's, you know, she's teaching on. And I want to make sure that y'all get that and understand it. Now, let me knock down something in Jeremiah chapter one, because like I said, I'm going to go live with, um, Pastor Pam at 745. Yeah, yeah, 745. I'm gonna go live with her. So and so let me knock down something in Jeremiah chapter one. Jeremiah chapter one. I'm gonna take a very familiar passage of scripture, but I'm gonna make it personal. Make it personal. I'm gonna show us how to make this personal and how it fits uh the aspects of our lives and what it does for us. So in Jeremiah chapter one and we see here matter of fact hold on one second i can i can make it easy for y'all let me just um share my screen here and you can see it from from here right here jeremiah chapter one and so um this is god talking to jeremiah this is his beginning you know this is um god giving him his initiation and his call I need y'all to hear me. This is God giving him his initiation and his call, um, you know, his his call of what it is that he wants him to do. Uh, it's, that, um, it's that old familiar hymn that I love so much. My favorite hymn in the whole world is a charge to keep I have. You know, didn't understand it when I was a little girl. Didn't know what them folk were saying. You know, thought they were saying Ray Charles, A Charles. Did not understand none of it. But mess around and found out what the lyrics to it was. A charge to keep I have. A God to glorify. A never dying soul to save. I got to be fitted for the sky. To serve this present age. That's my calling to fulfill. And oh may all my powers engage. I'm going to do my master's will. That's the lyrics. That's to that song. That's the first verse. It's another verse. We don't have to do. Y'all know black people. We shorten your song. Just like we shorten your name. Your name is Yolanda. We going to call you Lo. Yo. We going to shorten your name. You know. Your name Duke. We going to call you Ook. You know. We, we going to chop it and screw it. Some type of way. So we grab like an I fly away you hardly ever hear him sing all of i fly away you go get that first verse and that's what it is but that right there is jeremiah coming into his being his uh calling his identity of who he is so the lord begins to talk to him and affirm him and assure him of some things he gets down to verse 10 Verse 10, and I want to talk about that and make it a little personal for us because I want y'all to understand what happens to you once you transition over to talk, you know, to God being a part of your life and to, um, you know, you awakening to the fact that God wants to be a part of your life and you want him to be a part of your life. So Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10, it says, See, I have this day set thee over the nations. And over the kingdoms, then this is him telling, he telling Jeremiah where he had set him. Now, 
from that is amazing right there is that God automatically sets me in high places. Uh, even though, you know, I, Jeremiah is a child, he's actually talking to him in, in as a child. And he's saying, you know, this is what I have done for you. This is what I have because I've purposed your life from the very beginning. So there was nothing about your life that has been altered. I didn't wait until you got 20 for me to decide what I wanted to do with you. I already knew when I allowed your mom and your dad to hook up, you know, they thought they were just getting it in, but I was getting something in myself because I had purpose for your life. I had destiny for your life, everything. So I knew exactly what I was doing and what was happening. And what I did was, was at that particular time, I set you over nations and over kingdoms. Now, this is what I want y'all to understand. I told y'all we're going to make it personal. This is what God is saying to us personally, I have set you over some things. I've given you authority over some nations. Nations meaning the things that live on the inside of you. I've given you authority over the generational curses. Those are nations. I've given you authority over the things that's in your mama's lineage. Uh, I've given you authority over the things that's in your daddy's lineage. I've given you authority over the things that's in your culture. I've given you authority over these things, over the nations, because what happens with nations is, is each nation has its own personality. I, I wasn't going to do this tonight, but I'm about to go in the dough already, y'all. Okay, so look, this is the nations, the nations, it is, every nation has its own identity. Every nation, every, when we call it nationality, every culture, every nationality has something, its own identity, its uniqueness about it. And that is how we are composed as humans. We have different things about us. Uh, you know, one, one, one day you Sybil, the next day you, you may be Jackie, you know, the next day I don't know who you're going to be, you know, because all these nations that, that are living in and they begin to create issues and cause conflict and the whole sole purpose of them is to keep me from the divine purpose and the plan of God. That is the whole so, whole substratum of what they're trying to do is to keep me from being who God wants me to be. All of those nations are warring against the one thing and that is me being solid as a rock. That is against me being whole and me being one. That's what all those nations are coming against. Every one of them. The Chinese, the Mexican, uh, they're all, 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 they're all tripping. All of them tripping. The black folk talking slang. The white folk talking eloquent. Uh, you know, all of them. And, uh, you know, they all tripping. They got these all nationalities. But the common thing is, is that I do not be who God has purposed me to be period. Stop her from getting where she needs to be, period. That's the whole sole purpose. And so God tells Jeremiah when he initially starts talking to him, I'm giving you authority over that. I have. I've set you over that. Excuse me? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've set you over that. Wait a minute. You set me over the generational curses on my dad's family? Yep. Yeah. You set me over the generational curses over my in my mom's family. Yep. You set me over the culture that I was raised up in. The, oh, wait. Yes, I have. Oh, oh my God. You set me over the stigma that has been placed on our race as a people. Yep, I've set you over that. And also over the kingdoms. Wait a minute. What, 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 what you mean the kingdoms? I've set you over <laughs> even the greatest part of it. I've set you over it. I've set you over it. I've given you the ability to take it down. I've set you over it. Did you not understand what happened, Jeremiah? Did you not see what happened with David? Did you not see Goliath, which was a part of a 
kingdom. Goliath, a giant, but David took him down. Did you not see that? Because I have given you authority over the nations, which is all those different people, and I've given you authority over the head king of it, the head ruler of every bit of it. Why? Because in every kingdom, there is a head ruler. In every kingdom, there is a head ruler. And I've given you authority over every bit of it. I've given you authority over the people in the city, and I've also given you authority over the mayor. That's how I'm going to make it simple for y'all, for y'all to understand. In this city, the highest archie in the city is the mayor of that city. In the state, it's the governor. In the country, it's the president. And so he said, look, I have given you authority over every bit of that. Now, when you think about that, it kind, it'll kind of spook you some because we have been taught that, wait a minute, you know, you, wait a minute, I'm supposed to respect authority. Hold, hold up, hold up. Wait a minute, I can't come against that. I can't, I can't rise up against that. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble if I come against that in any capacity. Well, it's a way to do it. It can't supersede who you are. Because the authority was given unto who God wanted to have the authority. So it cannot supersede who you are and what you were purposed to do. There is a way to do it. So how do I do it? You handle it the way David handled it with Saul. Oh, y'all, the Bible is real. That's my favorite entity in this world. It is so real. You handle it like David handled it with Saul. Now, Saul was king, wasn't doing the right thing. (coughs) Wasn't doing the right thing at all. And David had been just like Jeremiah. Let's let's, let's walk through it. Had been set over the nation, David, that they had pushed in the back. But by God, was in the front. Had been set over the nations and over the kingdom. Ah, Saul is the king. Ooh, okay. David has, by God now, I'm talking to you about who God done told you you are and who God done done, man, who God done purpose you to be. I'm talking to you from that. I'm talking to you from that level. But even though that was so about David, David still used wisdom in how he went about handling that. He didn't run up on Saul and cuss Saul out. He did not do it. He did not show no disrespect to Saul. He did not do it. As a matter of fact, Saul wanted to kill him. And David said, I will not touch God's anointed. I will not do it. So there is a way to do it. So I don't want y'all to get in a mindset of thinking that you got to dumb it down and just not say certain things when you know it is a righteous or a right thing you use wisdom and the wisdom that David used was he did not touch it because he didn't want to get in any trouble with God and by him being obedient things worked in his favor Saul ended up getting himself in trouble Because the Lord told him to go into the land and fight with those people and destroy everything in there. And he didn't. He kept some of the stuff. And because he kept some of the stuff, the Lord rejected him. Because of his disobedience, God rejected him. So that meant he got booted out. And now David could come in. Uh, It says, let me see if somebody can quote it. Let me see if y'all woke tonight. Let me see where y'all at. It says, what about your gift making? What, 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 how, what does the scripture say about that? Somebody tell me. It shall make room for you. 
It say, but it, how, what it say gonna make room God, for you? Your gift shall make room for you. Exactly. So don't you see it made room for him? It's all about how you handle it. It made room for him. So he tells him, I've set you over the nations, all them different personalities you got. You got authority over every one of them. Why you sitting there letting Sybil win? You got authority over Sybil. And over the kingdom, which is, how did Sybil and Janet and Joni, how did they all get in there? It was a king that let them in. The king could be rejection. That could be the king. But you got authority over the kingdom too, remember? All right, so this is what he says will happen when you exercise the authority that you have. You are going to, I'm in verse 10 right here, Jeremiah 1 verse 10. When you exercise the authority or when we exercise the authority that has been given to us, we have the ability to root out. I do I need to know, did y'all, do y'all see that? Do y'all happen to know what root, what, what, what is that saying? What is that saying when it's saying root out? What is that saying? To my interpretation, it's to be extracted from the core and unable to reproduce again. Anybody else? Yeah, exactly. Anybody else? What did you hear? Root, root. You might have heard the same thing she said. What is it? Lean out and get rid of. Yeah, yeah. The root. Yeah, yeah. So he says, I've given you the ability to root this stuff out. Get it from the root. If you keep dealing with the surface of it and you just keep dealing with the branches on the tree, what is the tree going to keep doing? Reproducing, making up in its own kind. It's going to keep reproducing. Oh. So he says, root it out. Get rid of it. One of the greatest complications we have is, is we don't be wanting to get rid of stuff. Well, I don't want to hurt nobody feeling uh get rid of it. Get rid of it. Root it out, he says. And then you walk in your authority. All right, next thing he says. So he, he says, look, I, I want you to root out, and I want you to pull down. I want y'all to think about that. Pull down. What is it that you would need to pull down? Anything that's in a high place. Yeah, but give me an example of something that you would need to pull down. It, good or bad, you could have to pull Oh, I say pull down. Um, oh God, I don't know right now. Sorry. Emotions. Anything that you um, really? praise more than God. Hmm. Or worship. How about I make it simpler for y'all? Why don't you just pull down everything that's done exalt yourself over you? Why don't Amen. you pull down that that rejection? Why don't you pull down that low self low self-esteem? Why don't you pull down that insecurity? See, it's it's bigger than you. Anything that you are inferior to is bigger than you. So he tells Jeremiah, pull it jump down. I've given you authority to pull it down. Pull it down. And they got no business riding over your head. Okay, so I'll be fear. I hear that, like fear. Okay, anxiety, worry. Pull it down. Next thing he tells him is to destroy. Why would it need to be destroyed? So it won't really surface in your life and destroy you. Won't come back. Exactly. With a strong goal. Exactly. No, no trace of it as well, so it's not even any residue of it. Mm -hmm. See, 
This is for the people that still want to tamper with stuff. Don't want to just let it go, like God said. Still want to patty cake with it. Still want to play with it. He says, root it out. Pull it down. And destroy it. Then he says, and to throw down. Why would y'all think that throw down is put in there? You got pull down and you got throw down. To get it away from me, just throw it down. So you want me to have to touch it. Throw it down. Okay. <laughs> Let me give it's y'all. Some of authority then. Um, mm-hmm. Exit. Exit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So watch this. <laughs> Let me give y'all Negro talk. Y'all know, you know, we, we, we black. We got Negro talk. Boy, when two people be fighting, and it's a good fight, what did folks say they were doing? Throwing down. <laughs> oh, <laughs> down. They, get, they be doing good, man. Oh, 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 oh Lord. Oh, oh, you done took that. <laughs> good God of my God. Oh, baby. <laughs> Wait, so I gotta destroy it and beat the life out of it? If you pull it down, some things ain't gonna just leave. That. Some stuff you gonna have to really get down with. Some stuff you can just tell it, hey, Mr. Telephone Man, there's something wrong with my line. <laughs> just that easy. Somebody ain't gonna go like that. Mm -mm. Somebody you got to get downright serious with. Because it depends on the aggressive nature of what you're getting rid of. If it has a very strong aggressive nature, do you actually think it's just gonna walk away? Uh, No, ma'am, it's not. No. Haven't you seen where women have tried to get away from a relationship and they become very abusive. It's not, it's Mm -hmm. just not going to let go and just let you just walk away. So you have to throw down, which means take the, take an aggressive nature with it to get rid of it. Period. Then it says, to build. It's getting sweet with it now. But if you'll notice, these next two things did not show up until after he had taken care of those things. Once you have rooted out, pulled down, destroyed, thrown down, you now can be because what was that stuff trying to keep you from doing? Building, growing. Mm -hmm. You get it. Mm -hmm. You see. Got it out the way. Mm -hmm. You got your opposition out the way. Thank you, Jesus. You got what was holding you out the way. So, let me ask a question. How many of you want a better life than what you have right now. In honesty, if you do, do, you do. If you don't, you don't. That's me. I do. I do. Yeah. Me. Something is trying to hold you. I can assure you something is trying to hold you. And whatever it is, it's going to have to be dealt with in some capacity of being rooted out, pulled down, destroyed, thrown down. In order for you to begin to build and to plant. Because if you try to build on that stuff or try to plant on that stuff, what are you going to get? 
tares and wheats and the same thing. Yeah. Same, 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 same thing. Back in the fall. Same thing. So he says, hey, y'all know before a farmer plants, what do he have to do with this soil? Tell a tiller. He had to turn it on. Turn it over. Mm-hmm. That's right, turn it on till you gotta cultivate mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Has to clear it and all. So it's very important in understanding what has to happen. So there is no way that we can have a better life and remember that's our word being better. There is no way that we can have a better life and not be willing to root out, pull down, destroy, and throw down something. Something is going to have to go. I can guarantee you that if it ain't nothing but a way of thinking, it's got to go. Sometimes it be a person or people that have to go. Sometimes it's a mindset that have to go. Sometimes it's fear that has to go. But I can guarantee you, it's something that has to go before there can be a building and a planning to produce the new harvest. Because if not, I'm just going to be getting the same thing. I can move, go to a whole nother location, and I'm still going to get the same thing the same result it's going to be like it followed me down yeah it did it went with me it was packed in my bags so it's going to still be the same thing alright y'all got any questions or any comments let's get dirty Let's tilt the land. If we want some new harvest, we ain't got no other choice. Another thing I want y'all to take note to is Jeremiah was still in the mind of a child. As long as we keep that mentality We can't produce anything new. As long as we still think from that child mentality, we cannot produce a new harvest. As a matter of fact, Jeremiah's name is the weeping prophet. He pretty much was a crybaby. So, throughout his life, up until he made it to a point of surrendering to God like he needed to, he went through so many different tragedies and traumas and all that just kept him crying. It wasn't until he made a conscious decision and he penned the words that we've heard so much where it says, like, fire shut up in my bones. He to, it, it's in the Bible, it's in Jeremiah he said listen thy word he was talking about I didn't want to do it I didn't I didn't want to do it I didn't want to surrender to God I didn't want to do what God was wanting me to do he said but then his word became like fire shut up in my bones and that is the time when the greatest transition began to happen in his life So as long as we're thinking from an old mind, we're not going to get a new new purpose, a new destiny. We're not going to be able to get it. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm looking for new, 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 like Ty said, everything new. new opportunities 
new blessings, new favor, new doors, <laughs> new money. Yeah. New health. New mindset. New way of loving. A new way of giving. Looking for some new things. Anybody got anything before we get out of here? I'm going to come out about 7.30 because I need to give myself a few minutes to let my head settle in so I can get in front of these people. It's not that complicated for me to run my own platform, but I'm pitching to be on somebody else's, so I need to give my head a few minutes to settle in because y'all know how I operate. You know, they go left. You know, something kick off. I be the one straight left in there. <laughs> So I gotta, I gotta bring myself, you know, in poise. Like, hey, wait a minute, Delphine. Wait a minute. <laughs> you on somebody else's set? Don't wreck these people's set, cause I've turned over some tables and stuff in a minute, and anything get out of order, get unseemly. <laughs> I clear the whole place, so I gotta get my head right, get poised, you know, get get straight. Cause I, I don't feel all, you know, the type of stuff that I'm about to enter into and feel on my platform because see they know not to come to my platform with that foolishness they already know what time it is with me and they i ain't finna go over there you better not <laughs> you know because if i sense i can't move like i need to move the first thing i'm finna do is the same thing that man did on Jonah's ship I'm about to check everybody in here. I'm going to go through the list of names and look and see who on here and say, wait a minute, somebody on here, you done came with the wrong mindset because I can feel it. I'm not able to move like I normally can move. Is there a problem, Houston? Is there something we need to talk about? You know, because you're not going to hinder me where God done gave me. So, but I'm going to go on somebody else's set and I can't do that. You know, so I'm so I gotta get my head. Y'all, <laughs> y'all hope y'all gonna be in prayer. I gotta get my head. I need my intercessors to be in. in, in, in you know, I need my intercessors to be in prayer because y'all know your girl a while out. So don't do it. You know, so I don't. You know, so <laughs> let me give me a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a few minutes so I can get lights, camera, action ready, you know, so I can get on there with my with my face, you know. So, hello there, everybody. How are you doing? It ain't, ain't going to be like that. <laughs> Y'all already know it ain't going to be like that. <laughs> so, all right. Y'all got anything before we get, we get out of here and transition to the next phase? I ain't going to be surprised if we don't be having technical difficulties when I get ready to get to get on that stuff. I just ain't going to be shocked. That's just the truth. I just ain't. I'm just not going to be shocked. I'm not. I ain't going to even be shocked, to be honest with y'all, if Pam be late. I ain't going to be shocked. I'm not. I'm not going to be shocked if she be late. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't even be shocked if she don't even get a chance to do it. It, 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 it ain't going to shock me. It just ain't going to.